Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a classic film. Um, but before I do that, I would like to say um, today, as I'm recording this, is January 27th, um, and uh, it was announced that uh, Cloris Meech Leachman had passed away. You know, Cloris Leachman, incredible actress. You know, it's so many great films and TV shows. Like uh, the last picture show, Young Frankenstein or Frankenstein, as the character in the <laughs> film says, and uh, yeah, the Mary Tyler Moore show, and I remember watching uh, Malcolm in the Middle quite a bit uh, growing up. You know, uh, she was an incredible actress. Um, uh, she was also from Des Moines, Iowa, which I. I also was born and raised in. Um, we didn't go to the same high school, but uh, I know people who did go to uh, Roosevelt High School, which is where she went to. Uh, I went to Lincoln High School. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to just say that up front because I know in the past I had uh, talked about people who uh, passed on. Like, uh, People in the films and TV shows, be they actors, actresses, or comedians, or musicians, or whoever, but over the years I've kind of slowed down on that, and, um, but yeah, I just thought that, you know, I just like to sort of showcase her, not just because of uh, she and I being both from the same city and state, but just because she was incredibly talented. And also last year there were so many people who kept passing away that it's like eventually it's like there's so many that you might not be able to keep up with it, all of them. Um, so with with that out of the way, um, just uh, again wanted to show condolences to, and respect to Miss Leachman who's a uh, incredible at what she did. I want to talk about the film that I did see today, uh, tonight, on the big screen, um, which is, of course, uh, one of the most beloved and classic films of all time, The Maltese Falcon. Uh, and here I have uh, my ticket. And, um, yeah, what, can, what to say about this film? Well, one of the most beloved uh, film noirs, you know, Sam Spade, one of the most uh, beloved characters of film noir, based off of a book, which I have not read, but, um, you know, there were other adaptions prior to this film, so it clearly was popular enough to have multiple adaptations done by it, and, um, yeah, uh, written and directed by John Huston, who was incredible, um, Houston got nominated for an Academy Award for screenplay, um, though I believe back in those days the film the, the, for the, 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 the Oscars, screenplay was pretty much, I guess, uh, they didn't always have the distinction of original screenplay and adapted screenplay, but uh, maybe by the 40s I think they might have actually finally gotten that out because there was original story and then best screenplay, sometimes like adapted screenplay. Like, I guess from that story, it was sort of adapting it, but, you know, of course, these days, that would be incorporated as part of the original screenplay. If it wasn't based off of a book or any material that is now being repurposed or reused into another uh, a film or another film version. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to be completely just talking about the plot or the characters a whole lot other than just, you know, I guess my experience seeing this on the big screen because, you know, I've seen this film quite a few times. I know I probably have never talked about this film before, at least not directly overall in terms of maybe like in passing, but never really spent much time discussing this. Um, but this is a... A film noir that you know I saw in my teens um, that I just really got 
really enraptured by, and uh, I've loved this film for so many years. Um, and uh, so being able to watch this on the big screen was incredible. It was a fantastic uh, experience. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's just one of those films that you know I think uh, really deserves the big screen treatment. Um, and since it's 80 years old this year, you know, makes it a perfect uh, way, a perfect reason to uh, re-release it on the big screen for people to see if you're able to. Um, so, uh, you know, it was just, it was fantastic. Um, I would have gone earlier in the week, but just things just didn't uh, pan out. But I was able to see it uh, tonight, and uh, what an experience, what a film. <laughs> you know, uh, having loved this movie for many, many years, it, my fondness of this film grew even more. I just loved it. I got even more enraptured with the story. I think than before, which starts off as just, you know, a woman wanting somebody tailed, and then Bogart's, you know, Sam Spades, his uh, partner and private eye partner, uh, goes to tail uh, said person, uh, gets killed. And then, you know, that person that was be tailed uh, got killed, and, uh, yeah, it's just it's just this whole web of and then how the you know the Maltese Falcon uh, comes in and how all of this really revolved and began around this uh, uh, little statue. You know, that's just uh, it's just an incredible. It's in really in a, a film that's just incredible to see unfold. You know, this story and this film and the world. At all, all the, these characters are in. Um, Bogart, of course, is incredible, and this film really helped Bogart become really, you know, a leading man. But prior, and you know, he he had been in films, but he was usually like the tough guy, you know, a gangster or somebody who would get get offed at some point, you know. And this film really helped him be established as a lead actor, a leading man. And, uh, of course, the following year he was in Casablanca, though that film has a, you know, 1943 release, you know, more properly in terms of wide release. You know, that film, I guess, in many ways would be considered came out 1943 since it had its New York premiere in 42. Um, and it won, the, the, that uh, Casablanca won, you know, Best Picture and Director and Screenplay for the night, uh, all the films that were honored for 1943. Um, you know, uh, Sidney Greenstreet, um, he got nominated for an Academy Award. This was his first film, though he had prior, you know, been working on the stage, acting on the stage in England and America. Uh, but this was his first film, and what a film to make your debut in. You know, got nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, he didn't win, but, you know, it was just uh, really fantastic. Um, Mary Astor won an Academy Award the same year for another film, uh, The Big Lie, I, be I believe, if my memory serves <laughs> correctly. Um, yeah, it... You know, I, watching this film on the big screen, I really thought, like, you know, Peter Lorre uh, deserved an Academy Award nomination, if not possibly a win. Um, but, you know, uh, Lorre's presence in the film is fantastic, and only he could have played the... <laughs> played the part as he did. It's just, it's... Peter Lorre was such a talent. And, uh, the, uh, Elijah Cook Jr., uh, I 
information. He, he was a, he was fantastic as well. Uh, everybody in this movie is incredible. Um, Walter Houston has a cameo as the guy who brings in the Falcon uh, wrapped up paper, and he but he's been shot, and so he comes in, drops it on the floor, and then dies on on Sam's couch. It's really cool to just know that just, you know, just how a father and son, the, the relationship, just how long ongoing that had been because, you know, uh, Walter Houston uh, got nominated or won an Academy Award for Treasure of the Sierra Madre, which is what, uh, you know, John Houston won his Oscars for, his first Oscars for. Um, it's really cool that uh, father and son won Oscars the same year. But uh, again, it's really awesome to see just uh, another glimpse of uh, father and son working together in this film. And uh, I think uh, Humphrey Bogart deserved an Academy Award nomination um, for Best Actor, if not a possible win. Of course, this film came out the same year as Susan Kane, and I might talk about that film later in the year. Again, but you know, uh, Citizen Kane, you know, and this film, especially now, they, they many people look back and they're like, you know, more people say Citizen Kane, but I think there are people who say film, a film like uh, uh, the Maltese Falcon deserve like a, 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 a best picture. Uh, as opposed to How Green Is My Valley. And um, and that film isn't a bad film at all, but, uh, you know, compared to Maltese Falcon or Citizen Kane, it's not as good as these two films. I guess also perhaps not as memorable, uh, though that doesn't necessarily mean a film is uh, uh, bad, obviously. You know, there are many good films that have won Best Picture, just there's always like maybe like one or two that were more deserving of best picture. I think this is one of them. Um, again, How Green Is My Valley is not a bad film, but uh, just not as good as Maltese Falcon or Citizen Kane. Um, and since it's 80 years old and I was able to see this on a big screen, it made me uh, appreciate the film even more. I really love this movie thought it was a, an incredible, incredible f uh, film experience. It's one of my favorite experiences so far in my theater going life. And uh, I hope to have more, many, many more. Um, yeah, not much else to say. I mean, it's a classic film. Loved seeing it on the big screen. It is definitely one of my favorite films. I don't know where I would put it on a list like a top 50 or one of those sort of lists. I made a top 20 and it isn't in my top 20 but might be in my top 30 or 40. I don't know. I'd have to figure all that out but I love this film. I really love it. I think it's an incredible movie. If you haven't seen it I think it's worth a watch at least once. At least once in your uh, in your life. Be good to see it once and uh Maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe you'll see why uh, people revere it so much. It is a, it's a film noir that uh, helped sort of inspire many other film noirs in terms of like sort of a style. You know, there are various films that sort of uh, take its style or certain techniques that this film uh, utilized. And you can see that more as the 40s went on with film noir and into the 50s. Um, Obviously, there were film noir movies prior to this, and even the 40s, but the 1940s and 50s are really the true uh, period that the film noir really reigned supreme. And uh, this is one of the most beloved film noirs, and for so many great reasons. Um, I just love rewatching this film. I'm happy I got the opportunity to see it on the big screen. And so, yeah, uh, so much I could say, and yet 
sometimes words just can't do justice to a film like this. So I'm going to stop now because I don't want to just ramble on. You know, the acting is phenomenal. Uh, writing is incredible. Direction's incredible. Everything about this film is incredible. It's deserving of the praise it has gotten over the years. It's a true masterpiece. It's a classic. And yeah, that's pretty much all, all I've got to say. Um, what about you? Do you enjoy this movie? Do you dislike this film? Uh, anywhere in between? Um, you can most definitely comment. And uh, yeah, I... Uh, be quite interested in hearing what you have to say. Um, so, uh, I'll just uh, leave it there. I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.